right now. Recording in progress. Okay. Hi, Kathy Koja. Hi, John Scare. Um, as I, I mentioned to you in, in the message, um, I had just finished reading your brilliant, brilliant book, and I was like, I, I could I could spill a couple of like highfalutin paragraphs uh, about it, but I just really, really wanted to talk with you about it because it's so fucking good. So, um, so I figure we're alerting everybody that this is the spoiler version. This is not for people who have not read the book because I just want to talk about the fucking book. Um, Super spoilery. So if you have not read Dark Factory, you probably should not listen to this unless you like to live dangerously and in several time states at the same time. And then, you know, we, we judge no one, but we're just telling you spoiler city. Or unless you're the kind of person who only likes to read books if they know everything about them first. I understand that there are certain people in this world who read the last chapter first uh, just so that they know what they're in for. And I'm like, wow, what are you gonna do? Right, um, we don't judge. And besides, who knows? Sometimes back in the day when there were video stores, sometimes I would read the box of the movie before I got it and it would tell me many things. And sometimes I wasn't sorry because then I'd go, mm, not for me. <laughs> don't, yeah. So don't. <laughs> if, if, you, if you listen to our spoiler filled uh, conversation and you go, that's not the book for me, again, no harm, no foul. Exactly. And, you know, this may not be the book for everyone because everybody might not uh, want to have a good time um, or, um, or, or have their brain uh, uh, do calisthenics it might ha not have anticipated. I'm going to ask you a couple of, um, of I'm, I'm going to ask you the questions I really want to ask you. And then if we have time, uh, then we can talk about other stuff. Uh, we are also going to attempt to make this the world's shortest podcast, as in, like, you won't have to take the whole fucking month to listen to it. You won't so, even have to take a pee break, man. We're going to get in and get out. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so number one, and I, I'm, not, I'm not sure this is a question, but um, a statement to which you may respond. What I was really amazed by, I think actually one of my very, very favorite things about the book is uh, its engagement with the process of making things, the production, the behind the scenes. Now you're a producer, you know what it's like to throw events. I'm a producer as well, so I totally responded to this, but I was amazed by the sheer amount of detail that you went into of uh, the, the machinery at work across these various platforms on the low, uh, which is to say the DIY uh, punk uh, end and the extremely high finance end and everything in between. It was really, really meticulously collated. And, and I'm like, I just wanna ask you about how you came to realize that that's how you needed to do it and then go about doing it so well. As a producer, as you well know, everything is your job and everything is your fault. So you need to think, I, another friend who's a producer, he and I have the shorthand of move the rake. Remember in The Simpsons, when Sideshow Bob was always hitting himself in the face with the rake? Go find every rake you can find and move those rakes. And then there will still be rakes that you didn't find, but at least you have moved the obvious rake. Yes. So I'm used to thinking in macro and micro as much as I can in a given situation. And the, when I have done events, they're always site specific. So you go to the site and you start looking around, where are the pluses and minuses here? What is the site going to give us? What is the site going to impose on us or ask of us? And, and I think, and how much is it going to cost? How is it going to work? How are you going to get audience in? How are you going to have security? All everything everything yep. because you have to think of everything before you begin right you have to at least have working knowledge and things might still go sideways but it will hopefully be in ways that you didn't think of so at least you don't have to to feel crushed by your failure yes um ways that I don't step on the rake don't and the rakes, I think, are the same in every in in Dark Factory as the dance club in the in the book and the various entities that 
try to either co-opt or recreate or join into the making of this kind of unstoppable juggernaut, which in the end really is making itself, which yes. is all, all art, right, is making itself. You are just facilitating the making. But that kind of thought has to happen on every level. And the one thing that I, I think at a, a corporate level, the, the more money that is involved, the sometimes the stricter and the more, not stricter, but strictures, right? It gets tighter. There, there are less, there's less room to move. There are less avenues that you can plausibly pursue because the money is there yes. and the money is sitting on the bench and the money is taking up three quarters of the bench and you have a quarter of the bench to operate in. Yeah, so the, the money owns the bench. The money owns the bench and the money would like to own you, which is one yes. of the characters in the book. Felix, the DJ says this kind of money, they buy you. Yes. And Ari says they try to. Exactly. There's a, and that, that will take us back to the genie question because we have to answer the genie question. Yes, we before. do. I love producing. I found it. I found out that I was good at it when I first started to do it, which is often a good bellwether for something you should be doing. If the yeah. first time you make a pizza, your pizza is flawless, you better get busy making more pizza because uh -huh. that's what you should be doing. And I love producing because I love solving problems because for someone who's as meticulous and anxiety ridden as I am, <laughs> having solved problems in front of me makes me feel so good, right? Yeah. And because of the things that, and this happens in Dark Factory in, in Escalation, the things that productions will enable that you did not expect that mm -hmm. no one could expect and things yes. will happen in a show, right? In a book, in a song, anything, right? Yeah, no, you, you, you plan meticulously so that when things go sideways, you know where everything is and you can respond. And uh, what characters are doing throughout this book is responding to changes that are coming from every left field possible. You know, just when you think you know something, it slipped out from under you and you have to go to the next thing. And I, I think that's what makes Ari such a, a particularly fascinating character is that Ari is the one who never stops moving, even when sitting still is always there's either either he's making something happen or something is is moving him towards the next thing that he's going to respond to. So he's like on it all the time. Everybody else has their little pieces of the puzzle, but he's dancing between everything. Uh, he's like the synapse that won't stop firing. Um, yeah, beautifully said. I mean, they, in the very beginning of the book, his boss at Dark Factory, Jonas, is saying, you and your fucking brain. And it, yeah. he's saying it there like, oh, you and your fucking brain. And then at the end of the book, when things have changed drastically for him, he's like, God, you and your fucking brain, right? You're Ari's a maker. And yeah. that said about him several times in the book, he's a maker, give him something, anything, and he'll make something out of it. Yes. And, and, he, and the world. But he's not reflexive. He's not reflective. He is reflexive. Mm. He can make. That's why the other main ish character, Max, is nothing but reflective. Yes. And I loved their friendship, their frenemy ship, and that turns into to true friendship. I love the two of them together because they're just the same, but at completely different poles. Yes, which I think is how life is. I mean, um, one of the fascinating things is uh, Ari makes stuff out of what is. You know, it, it, it's not like he's sitting there and manufacturing a doodad. The doodads are all out there. Everybody's making something. It, it's sort of like uh, the, the Charles Fortian thing where uh, uh, it's steam engines come steam engine time. Like all the pieces of the steam engine were, were laying around and then somebody went, if we put these together, it'll go two, two and like right. out the top, right? Um, so he's kind of that guy, but everybody else is obsessively in their, you know, Max lives in his head. Uh, David lives in the game. Uh, Jonas lives at his club and or his no, actually he lives in his penthouse with whatever his girlfriend is now. Um, um, and uh, yeah, but all of the pieces and um, yeah, no, it's, it's just really fascinating. And the rigor, I mean, I did not expect this to be 
to the extent it is a showbiz story. It's almost re like reading William Goldman's Tinsel or something in, in terms of how the, how the cosmic sausage gets made. Um, and I just and it is very much about, and that's what's most interesting. I love reading about how that sausage gets made. I yeah. love understanding people's process and watching them. That's why I you're drawn in by the art, but you also want to see if you're of that mindset. Well, how does this happen in real life? It's not. It feels like magic. It looks like magic, but you have to participate in the magic, or else it won't work. You can't yeah. just go magic me. You know, you have to put in tons and tons of effort and sweat and you have to fail. You have to fail a lot. And failure lot. is something that was new to Ari. And he had to, you know, go through that in the book. Some of the things that he made as as Felix, his true love says to him, shows go south. It happens. And he says, well, not like this, because he's never had it happen before. He's like, oh, no, in, in his professional life, in his personal life. Yes. But in his professional life, no. I mean, um, um, spectacular ambitions inevitably result in spectacular failure sometimes, but it's the only way that spectacular successes happen. And sometimes the things that look like failures, I mean, this is a truism for a reason, the thing that looks like a failure today mm -hmm. in six months or six years, you look back and go, that was necessary. If that had not happened, this would not have happened. There's a scene in the book where Jonas is just reaming him and going, you know, you, I, it, it took me years to make this club and you, you blew it up in one night. And mm -hmm. Ari is thinking, well, what if that hadn't happened? Where would I be right now? Would we still be, would Jonas and I still be sitting in his penthouse watching, you know, everything on the screen? Would I even have met Felix? Would I have known Max? Would, yeah. What would have happened to me? If yeah. I hadn't gotten fired, if I hadn't pushed, the, kept pushing this as far as it will go. Yeah, and, and also if uh, uh, corporate drones like Lee hadn't uh, been at his heels, just waiting for a chance to uh, uh, to let everybody else smell the, to get Jonas to smell the blood so that the piranhas could come. You know, um, it, it, it's I, I really, really love that angle uh, as a guy who uh, uh, has labored in Hollywood. Just the 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 people who are just waiting, uh, the the punctilious uh, uh, little bloodsuckers who are just waiting for the chink in the armor to stab in. Um, sure, and it's, sometimes it's just this causeless malice. It isn't even necessarily. There's a, a flashback when Lee first meets Ari, and she just yes. dislikes him on sight. Yes, it's just I can't stand you, and it on a on a macro level. It's funny that a, there was another character, um, Burke, who is like the right-hand person of the ultimate corporate Inez Heckman Weir yes. in this book. Burke hates him too. And it seems the further you are from chaos as a nutritive medium, the more you're going to hate him because your hackles go up instantly. It's like, this is like an agent of change and I of chaos. Like I'm afraid of that. I don't like that. I hate yeah, it. Yeah, going yeah. And you realize in in the design of life, it is like Cobra and Mongoose time. I mean, there, there are certain kinds of, of people, certain kinds of life forces that are so diametrically opposed in the design that the second they meet, it's not going to go well, you know? And it, right, it can never go well. And the difference between that and between Arya and Max, who seem like they're naturally opposed, but they're not. No, they're no, no. literally the same kind of person just operating on different ends of the spectrum. And those people, sometimes you have trouble vibing with to begin with, but that natural affinity pushes you together. And well, you, I think what you realize is that um, uh, the thing that you're doing is bigger than both of you and that you are like, uh, you're like the other lobe, you know, in, in the brain and, and that, and the things have to fire back and forth between you. Uh, I, I, you know, I think of this like even, politically as hard as it is to to say it i've never seen a bird that can fly with one wing uh mm -hmm. there you know the whole thing is there because the whole thing is there otherwise it doesn't fly and so parts that may not want to uh be together forced to be together can find out that being together was a really good idea because yeah. right because it caused an, an essential synergy it would never have happened any other way you have to make that happen 
if but if the parts are completely diametrically opposed and you're like forcing magnets together they will never get together you must separate them because it will never you know like fascism and good people right? <laughs> freedom yeah fascist and non-fascist people those are never going to be to so you either have to yeah they don't dance that well together they sure don't well, one sure. of them tries to kill the other one, and that's a real problem just to start. That's right. That's what your first clue should be that you shouldn't be together. <laughs> it's like, okay, you don't respect my existence. So, okay, we, we cannot be friends. But I think friendship too, friendship is so odd and you have to be open to the people that you choose or that you allow to come into your orbit. Ari is very outward facing. Ari yes. is... Ari is open to the world and whatever happens, Max is closed and Max has a real hard time opening up just enough to let, in the, in the beginning of the book, he's fixated on his girlfriend at the time. And you can just see this is not going to go well. Yeah. You, Max is like not, pay, he's like the, you know, hear no evil. Yeah. And you can see her trying to tell him things and he's just not listening. Yeah. And suffers for that. That's one of the problems with living in your head too much. You know, you, 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 you're, not, you're not seeing what's going on. Um, now, I want to segue from here to the actual event and just the, um, um, the creating of the space that we can all actually come ecstatically together. Uh, and um, I mean, it's all driving towards that thing. Did I tell you that I started crying before I started the second to last paragraph because I could feel it coming in the same way that uh, when I used to do hallucinogens, which was a lot, um, I would, if I knew I was going to drop acid, I would start tripping 15 minutes before I put it in my mouth because I already knew, it. you know, it was like the... Uh, the ancient gates were already opening and all I had to do was drop the coin in the fountain, you know, in the well. Um, right. And so it, it was so weird because I knew I was coming up on the end. I could feel the mass of pages, uh, you know, right. this way. But when I, as, as soon as I, before I even started the second paragraph, because I knew it was going to work and I, it was just like, <gasps> and now I'm in. And it's, right. and, and it was wonderful. So now I just got to ask you, um, is this something, you're, you're somebody who works in uh, immersive art, uh, the, this book uh, being a case in point of taking immersion into the page, which is not a thing. I mean, I've read a lot of books that drew me in. I, I, otherwise, I wouldn't have ever. Right, they're you know, supposed to. That's our job, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, but 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 you're playing uh, you're you're playing an expanded game, and pointing towards the most expanded game where uh, where metaphysics and gaming uh, meet at a party and dance and fucking connect forever. Uh, so, um, I mean, are we gonna build one? Uh, is, is is that the dream? What what what? I'm going to stop. Uh, I'm going to stop talking. And but what do you think? I think it is the dream. I think that the world really turns on an axis of joy. I think if we forget that or don't acknowledge it, then that is going to be to our peril, and that and it, things will not work. Things will not work until and joy is not just you know I'm having a great time at. Disney World. Joy <laughs> is so elemental. Joy takes you out of yourself. And everyone has had those experiences where yeah. they have been somehow, I mean, religion is based on chasing those experiences, right? Yes, ecstatic it, experience. Absolutely. Yes. And, ex and that is across the board. That is throughout all of human history. We've always been chasing that ecstasy, which is ecstasis, right? You're out, you're out of yourself mm -hmm. and you are paradoxically very much yourself but you are not, you are part of the bigger thing. And I would, I can't imagine a better outcome for our sad species than to find that moment and mm. to be able to dance and fuck and have a wonderful time together 
yeah. with our heads and our bodies and our spirits and bring everything together. And I don't think that that's particularly, you know, woo. I don't think that that's yeah. like a nice thing that could happen. I think cynicism is very easy. I've spent oh. years there. It's mm -hmm. quite comfortable <laughs> because it feels like you really know what's going on, babe. Mm -hmm. And you are not, you just, you see through everything. But that's a dead end. And that's yes, a shock. Is. By you're telling yourself to not feel pain. Yes. At the brokenness of everything. So yeah, it's a what psychic is, narcotic. It is, and it doesn't work. And you have to keep taking more and more of it, like many narcotics, yes. or they don't work. You can't get to that same numb place where you feel walled off. And the in this in the story, Max begins the story desperately trying to wall himself off by making his his urge to make artificial worlds is very good and healthy but he's using it in an unhealthy way to cut himself off from other people and that's why he resists ari so strenuously even though he keeps saying no i don't want to work with you but what are you doing no i don't want to work with you what are you doing now <laughs> because he the part of him that wants to really create can't help but be drawn to this person who is all about enabling creation yeah. that's what Ari creates opportunities for other people to do their shit yeah there's a moment in the book where Ari and Felix are together on a on a bus after this the first of these big ecstatic experiences and Felix is saying why did you you know how did you do this or why did you do this and Ari said I don't know I don't think that way right don't think in why I just do and sometimes why can wall us off from mm -hmm. getting to that ecstasy because if you not that you should not be mindful and you'll know, think all you want but there's a certain point where I think it's Iggy Iggy Pop who says you can't think your way out of everything I, that's he's... beautiful and you know what else Iggy said my, my favorite quote just because I'm not just because I'm not stone doesn't mean I can't think stoned thoughts. Iggy is very wise in a lot of ways. He really and is. He has I love that too. Block for a long time, which, as you and I know, it is not easy to stay on the block for that long. But if you if you stick around long enough, you start to see cycles and things, and mm -hmm. that's one of the this book kind of moves in a spiral. It's like this happens yeah. and then it happens again, but in a different way. And then it happens again, but in a different way. And it keeps heading up, 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 up. Mm -hmm. But I want to talk about Jeannie too. I love when people have favorite characters because I always have them in books that I love. I, and it's I'm not, not always the people you think. I'm not saying Jeannie's my favorite. I'm saying she's the one I had the biggest crush on. I, actually, the, the one I had a crush on because everybody else, uh, you know, I, 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 I love them. I'm fascinated, but I'm like, oh, Jeannie. And pretty much from the moment she walked in the door, uh, just the big smile and the openness. And, and again, to the, the particular thing that happens with trust fund babies or rich kids uh, who have had all of their choices almost made for them uh, in advance. So they, uh, um, so many of them never make the great thing themselves. The great thing was made before them, but they gravitate towards the people who do amazing things, the, the best of them. Uh, genies will just yeah. show up and they're just like, oh, I'm going to dance to this all night. You are the best and I love you. And it's a, a pure and a real love. And that's why it breaks my goddamn heart the way it goes down. I know. And Jeannie, Jeannie can be awful in a lot of ways. Okay. And yes, it's true. Jeannie too has the thing that, that she has the, the ruthless self-regard of a child too, because Jeannie is kind mm -hmm. of emotionally stunted in ways. And I think because money is in our society, money removes friction. Money is the great lubricant, right? If you have enough money, you can remove many experiences from your life and many frustrations from your life but Jeannie is looking for that friction Jeannie wants to feel what it's like to you know grind against the world in good ways bad ways yes and she can get it in good ways sometimes she'll get it in bad ways and she also she uses her own pain as a punishment for others too but 
This is true. This is true. Jeannie's, That's the Jeannie's downfall. And again, spoiler alert. Yeah. Jeannie's downfall is that she knows Felix so well, but she doesn't know that she's she doesn't seem to know that she pressed his big hot button. Right. And pissed him off. Yes. And that that button is so hot and so ingrained that he and Ari almost broke up because of it. Mm -hmm. It's like, are you accusing me of being a careerist? Jeannie, do you think you can buy me? I mean, this is his whole thing. This, yeah. this talent that I have belongs to me and to God, basically, although he doesn't put it that way, but he thinks, mm -hmm. right? And he's like, no one can buy this. No one can, don't ever try to buy me or insinuate like, that I can sell myself. And, 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 she didn't mean like, that. I'm, I'm not trying to buy you. I'm trying to help you. I just want she you to have all the that, resources you can so that you can do what you want to do. But money means something so different to her than it does to him. Yeah. Because she's never lacked it. It yeah. has never been. And he makes a point of saying to Ari, she's not like her family. Her family's evil, but Jeannie's not like that. And then this to him is like saying, you are like that. I can't believe you're like that. Why are you like that? Yes. Yeah. That, that was the heartbreaking thing. I'm still having a hard time wrestling with that all uh, and forgiving Felix, although I feel the same way and have turned down more money than you would believe uh, be in the face of things like that. It's like, oh, oh, so you basically just want the opportunity to take to take what I do and turn it into whatever the fuck you want and uh, don't let it hit me on the ass on the way out. I'm already on the way out. Uh, you know, oh, that's not what it's so for. Much. That's not what it's for. Yes. And there was a there was a moment with him in in the flashback of Felix where he's at a club and he's been kind of building his reputation after failing he believes to become a concert pianist which was like his first love yes and this guy who's like a big deal in the dance club world is flirting with him and going oh let's dance oh let's go out on the smoking patio right and yeah. Felix is like mm -mm, no. I'm not going out on the smoking patio and he just dances by himself and dances yeah. away like I'm not doing that so for her to make that huge miscalculation, mm -hmm. that is her downfall. That yep. that's that's what ends up hurting Jeannie the most. I do believe that if Jeannie had lived, spoiler alert, if Jeannie mm -hmm. had lived, they would have been friends again. He would have found a way. Yes. And again, the, the problem with that kind of uh, fiercely alive and fiercely self-destructive personality uh, is that yeah, I mean, if the high doesn't work, there, if, if up doesn't work, there's always down. That's right. Right. Express to the basement, right? We're not even going to stop. We're just yeah. going to go straight, straight to the bottom. And there, I guess I showed you all by being in the hospital. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, I mean, I mean that, that's like fucking Valley of the Dolls, man. Uh, but it's just, you know, so, so heartbreaking. Um, um, I want to double back. We, we got one more point to make, but I want to double back just a, a second to to Joy and how I feel that a thing that many, many, many people don't have, particularly cynical people uh, or otherwise uptight and strictured people, uh, people uh, uh, who who life has forced into the in insectile side of the equation, uh, is a capacity for joy and the ability to cultivate a capacity for joy. And that's what I like about the idea of something that that opens joy in you from the inside if you go there. Um, and so, yeah, I, I guess I do really like the, I would go to that club. I'm not a big club guy, but I would go to that one um, because I would like, uh, I, I would like, I feel very free inside myself, but I would like to feel like I was in a world where everybody was there with me. You know? And what you say about capacity is, is totally 100%, 100,000% correct. Everyone possesses that capacity for joy, but you mm -hmm. must cultivate it and you have to find, it's on you to find those things and to then participate in them. And they won't always be easy or they... They will always be right, but they will not be easy. And you yeah. will have to struggle some. And especially when, and I know this best from like a, and I hate the word creative, like 
I'm in a creative field. All fucking fields are creative. I am mm -hmm. so sorry, but that is true. They are all mm -hmm. equally creative. If you are an extremely creative nurse, and I have known a couple. Yes. Girl, you are doing God's work just as much as, you know, the Beatles were or as Picasso was or anybody or as Jonas Salk or anyone. Yeah. All creation is the same. All creation opens outward and it opens toward joy and toward creating joy in other people or ease or wonder or and they're always positive things even if they might be delivered like that but they're mm -hmm. always positive mm -hmm. so now finally i want to talk about your extremely ultra jacked up style in this particular literary event um i i've seen you i've seen you when i first read you with uh the cipher and stuff, there was a very, you, you have a very, very precise way of attacking the language. The only people I've ever read that write anything like you are copying you. Um, so, but this one is so propulsive. I, I found myself going back and looking at how the, the sentences are structured, just although I already knew because I could feel them working, um, just the way the way consciousness streams and interacts with itself so that even when people are sitting still it's moving and, and Ari is like the the perfect exemplar of this but even when Max is sitting in a little room by himself trying to isolate as much as possible the universe is churning um so it, was there um how conscious was the choice or did the voice just tell you what it was the second you landed? I've struggled against it because this, this pro and this project took me easily three, four times as long as anything that I've ever worked on. It I took believe that. Ever. And mm -hmm. it's not because it was complicated. It's because I kept trying to make it be something that it wasn't. At first mm -hmm. I thought it could only be a print novel or it could only exist in that format. And the, the image that I keep using is when the cartoon person is trying to stamp on the suitcase to make everything fit in. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that was a year blown. I wasted trying to make it fit that format. And every time I tried to make it fit that format, I would try to slow down that voice so you could tell all the things that were in it was not having it, as you well know. Either you do what it says or you do nothing, but you are not going to get over on that. You must do what it says. Yeah. So once it gave up and said, okay, you're driving, I'll take my hands off the wheel. That was how it just kept going. Boom, 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 boom. And then the place to stop and examine those other things was in these interstices, was on the darkfactory.club site where you could look, oh, I want to look at Marfa's interviews. I want to know more about Max, whatever, whatever. That was the place for all that stuff. Not in that narrative, the larger narrative, yes. yes. Oh, no, the, the talky part, no, no, no. <laughs> yes. No, I, I, I love that. I, I, I've always found that um, that my art is best uh, when I get out of the way and ride it as opposed to try and make it do stuff. Uh, you know, it's like, no, 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 no. You will never, you will never do it. You will, you are, you are the servant of what you're making. And if you're not, then you should not make it because... Uh, we are also I am also the accomplice and friend of it. I'm not like its boss and I'm not like it. And I'm not its servant. I'm its friend. We're, we're dancing together. But um, but uh, I'm there because it's there. You know? I'm the servant. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Well, I'm just right. there to get it. I, I want you don't always see what you're making or you don't see the scope of it. You don't see the end of it, but you know that that is there. You trust that that end is there. And for oh, that, absolutely. Yeah. You, and you just, and that's why, and I have to give a big shout out to Trisha Reeks at Meerkat Press because I cannot imagine doing this project. It would not have been literally not possible without a completely sympathetic and collaborative publisher. And from the very beginning, she and I, she was willing to take risks. She was willing to figure out, 
is this going to work? Is that going to work? The design of the site is all down to her. The design of the book is down to her. We talked about everything, but these were all Trisha's designs. And I really wish that people would understand how extraordinary this is, especially in the current publishing landscape. You know, no cool. shade on the bigs, but you could not have done this in anything but an independent context. There's yes. no Well, now I love her too. Um, you know, that, that, it's really amazing. And you know what? We're bringing this in uh, under half an hour. Um, <sighs> we have done it. So it's such a pleasure. Uh, I, I love you to pieces and your book is fucking phenomenal. Um, as I have said in the past, the best thing I ever wrote is a gateway drug to you, Kathy Koja. Uh, and so, so proud of you. Congratulations on this wonderful thing. Thank you, my dear. And thank you for this. This was great. See you soon. Bye. We did it.